already asked for forgiveness for so many times and I didn't realize that after confession I would feel peace. Jesus is there no matter what. It doesn't matter how many times you screw up, it doesn't matter. He's so merciful and gracious. I'm Joanne Bywaters. I live in Lethbridge, Alberta, Canada. I was born to non-Christian parents, both really young. My mom was 19 and my dad was 21. And we didn't have a life of prayer, uh, never went to church. I hated God and I blamed God for a lot of the things in my life, even though I had a really good life. Like my parents, we, we were raised you know, camping and going on holidays, went to Disneyland, did lots of fun things like that. They just wanted us to be happy, but uh, I, never thought, I never thought of God. My first experience of God was when I was 16, going to high school and my best friend's dad was the minister at the United Church. And um, they invited me to church one day, and so it wasn't very long after that that I was like, oh, this is cool, I wanna go to church, I wanna get baptized. And so I got baptized there. The next weekend, um, they moved. My best friend and his family, they moved to Canmore, and I never went back to church. So then, I finished high school, and had relationship for three years, and then we broke up. And then just before graduation, I met a guy and then he went to university in Lethbridge. So I went to university here in Lethbridge, followed him. So I got pregnant and I was really excited to have um, the baby. And so I told my boyfriend, he was scared. He was young, he was only 19, I was 21. So we decided anyways, you know, I'd tell my parents. I went and told my parents. That didn't go so well because my mom and dad had me when they were really young and I think they were just scared for me. Um, and so I didn't really think about things. I just um, asked him what we should do. He made an appointment with a doctor and I went to the doctor and I ended this little one's life and I decided um, I'm gonna go to Australia with a couple of my girlfriends. So there's four of us that went and just basically didn't process stuff, just left. And just, I started a pattern of running then. And um, I went to Australia, had, you know, lots of different fun experiences, good experiences. And it was interesting because my girlfriends would go to church when we were, when we were not on, our, on our trip. And I never went to church. I never felt like it was somewhere I belonged, I guess. So came back to Canada. Um, got a job teaching, went back with this guy and we got married and we were married for three years and then I realized I wanted kids and he said he didn't so got divorced. After I got divorced I was divorced about two or three years, met the husband that I married and have two kids with. When Todd was born he was 23 weeks gestation and at that point it started to hit me that um, that my abor abortion, well, right away I, I blamed myself and I said, um, it's my fault because I took a life and so God's punishing me. And that's how I thought of God, that he was a punishing God. So after Todd was little and I was teaching, I was teaching a boy from, um, the, he used to go to the Baptist church and he was Christian and when I first taught him in grade 10 he was Christian but I wasn't and then in grade 12 when he was in grade 12 I'd become a Christian but I wasn't going to church I didn't know Christians had to go to church 
And so he invited me to the Baptist church and I went, I walked in there on the Sunday and they were singing a song, 10,000 Angels. And I thought, oh my goodness, I'm home. This is home. And I was just bawling. And I just, I loved it. We went there for two years and my husband got baptized. I was going to get my kids baptized, but this nun that I was in a prayer group with, she kept reminding me, no, your kids need to be baptized, not just dedicated. And so, um, so then I left there one night. I was at a prayer group at the Baptist church and I left and I was on my way home. And for some reason, I took a wrong turn and I ended up at the Catholic church at St. Martha's. And I was parked outside and I looked up at the cross and I'm like, well, they both have a cross. God, what's the difference? Like, what's the difference between Protestants and Catholics? The next Sunday, I went to the Baptist church and I was there and Father Dennis was the pastor, the priest. And during communion, it was like that little voice said, listen again. So then when he held up the host, he said, this is my body, this is my blood. And I was like, what, this is my body? And then I, right in my head, it was like Coke or Pepsi, you know, Coke or Pepsi, Coke's Catholic church, Pepsi is the Protestant church. And I'm like, I'm going Coke, it's real, it's the real thing. And I had asked God, God, if you're real, I need you. And then it was, that was real. So I knew he was at the Catholic church. And then when I was at the Baptist church, I remember them giving some testimonies and people were always mad at the Catholics. And I didn't like that. So anyways, we'd started prayer groups and stuff there. And I went to both churches for a year. And then after a year, I started wanting to go more just to Catholic church. And I was like, God, where do you want me? You know, my family wants to go to the Baptist church. I want to go to the Catholic church. And I said, so Sean and I prayed that morning. And on the way to the Baptist church, we got a flat tire. So I took it like, that's it. I'm going to the Catholic church. So I went to the Catholic Church and then I found out that you have to take RCIA and you can't even become Catholic until you're like, I was already baptized by confirmed and all that. So then I took RCIA, RCIA and I was there for, um, and it took me a year and a half because I was so, I heard so many things about Catholics that um, obviously weren't true, but I had to kind of process all of that. And all my questions were answered. Every time I had a question, it was answered. And then, you know, I'd go back to the, Baptist Church and I'd try to explain things or say things and um, they didn't really want to hear it or um, know it but but I did get the blessing from the pastor there I remember going to talk to him and he said wherever you're led you need to go you know so I that was good um, because it was hard to leave somewhere where you have a lot of friends and stuff but then once I left there it's you kind of had to break with all of that it was um, you kind of didn't belong in two places it felt like so i remember my mom saying well you're you baptized you united then you're baptist now you're catholic next you're going to be mormon i was like oh lord have mer mercy no i just want to stay catholic because this is true um, so my parents um they didn't come to my confirmation or anything like that I don't think they came to my when my kids came into the church and my kids actually ended up getting baptized like I was in RCIA but they ended up getting baptized before I was actually in the church then my husband he didn't want to become Catholic but after I became Catholic and you know my questions were and I came into the church in um, in August and it was funny because one of my favorite scriptures was God makes all things work together for good for those that love him and when I got confirmed that was uh, the scripture that day so I thought that was cool even though everybody else that I went through RCIA with they were finished in a year and I went like a year and a half so my first confession was with Father Dennis who's passed away now rest in peace Father um, I remember being so nervous to go in because I had a whole list, like I broken all the commandments. As soon as I walked in the door, he made the sign of the cross and I started bawling. And poor, he was kind of uncomfortable, I think, but I started bawling and he said, just tell me the biggest thing on your heart. And I said, abortion, I had an abortion. And um, I just cried and, um, and I'd already had a lot of healing from that already because of this prayer group. and. Um, I went to Project Rachel after I became Catholic too. And, but in that first confession, I remember Father Dennis saying, you know, he struggled with an addiction and at some point, I, God would use this for good. 
And I was like, how on earth could he ever use something like that for good? Like, there's no good that could ever come out of that. I had already asked for forgiveness for so many times, and I didn't realize that after confession I would feel peace. But I, I went in with this big black sheep feeling, and I remember seeing a big black sheep, and then when I came out, it was white. It was just white. And I was like, oh my goodness, I feel free. Like, I feel so free. And then as soon as I walked out, I felt like all these mats came back on the sheep. Like, it was like, oh my goodness, I have a lot to work through. And, um, but God has been faithful and he's seen me through, working through all of that. My kids got baptized 2000. I got baptized to, or confirmed in 2001. The deacon um, that introduced me to St. Francis, or the Franciscans, he was getting a divorce. I was getting a divorce and we were friends for a year and then we started seeing each other and then he, because of his divorce and the whole situation, um, he lost his faculties which is another sorrow, of a huge sorrow of my life and his life um, and to this day he still doesn't have his faculties back but uh, we're praying for that or um, and we'd always thought we'd be able to get married and he got an annulment, I got an two annulments and um, but he wrote to the Pope and the Pope because of the teachings of the church he can't get married again so then we've decided you know we've obeyed and said the church is more important than our relationship or so he's very Catholic he goes to mass as often as he can and I go to daily mass um, because God's loved me so much and and I've especially realized that, you know, after taking a life and his child's life, um, I, I want to love him that way back, you know, like, um, so if, if it consoles him in some ways to go to church, um, and it definitely blesses me, I'm going to go to daily mass. So, um, so I taught for um, nine years. And after I became Catholic, we had adopted two kids. We only had them for a year, but in that year, um, I just couldn't be a full-time mom, full-time teacher, go to mass all the time. So I asked God, like, one day I was teaching, and my kids were at two separate day homes. And when I was teaching, I was having so much fun. I was laughing, you know, high school kids. And I stopped and I thought, you know, I'm having all this fun. What are my kids doing? And so I went home and I had another conversion. I remember opening the Bible because I said, God, what do you want me to do? I can't do all of this. And so I opened the Bible and it was Job. And it was, why did you even have me? Why was I even born? And so then um, I quit, te I, I talked to my husband and he said, it's okay, you know, you can quit teaching, we're fine. So I quit teaching and just was raising the kids or whatever. And then long story short, the kids wanted to go back to their real mom. And I just thought, well, both Sean and I thought, um, we don't have the right to keep kids from their real mom if their real mom is in a place now to, to have their kids and it was really hard to let go of those little guys but I remember walking and going out into the field and I said God what do you want us to do and all I heard was rich man dressed in purple and I was like what is the rich man dressed in purple like what is that and so the day of the court I was reading the daily readings and it was the rich man dressed in purple and I had said and I wrote in my journal rich man dressed in purple will mean let go and so when I got there um, she was dressed in purple the girl you know, that it was the mom and the readings that day. So I thought we we're supposed to let go. And so these little two, these two little kids um, that we had for a year, they went back to their, their real mom. And that, I didn't realize how much of an effect that would have on my youngest son, especially. I can't imagine not being Catholic. I think in a way, um, God's always had his hand on us, all of us, but um, I am so thankful to be Catholic. I love the church, I love the teachings of the church. It's given me peace. And before my life, 
I always had relationships. Like I never had a time in my life, even till five years, four years ago, that I didn't have a boyfriend. I always had a boyfriend. And now I can be single and I'm happy. And I remember a kid too, when I was teaching in high school, he said, Joanne, I really, we really have to, or I want to be a me before I'm a we. And I'm like, how do you know that? You're a kid. I'm just learning that now, you know, and I was in my 20s or 30s already. And now I'm finally like, I'm okay being a me. You know, I'm okay being, and I'm happy being me. And it's because of the church and what it teaches, you know, it's like, it gives you confidence and peace um, of just being who you are and not afraid to be who you are. And now I have so much joy just sharing my life in little ways. I don't do big things. I go to church, I'm with friends. Um, I have lots of friends like in a mom's rosary group uh, that keeps me, and that's kept, kept me grounded for when I was going through, after I committed adultery and was, I thought it was so hard to be Catholic. Oh my goodness, I was like, how do you keep all these rules? You know, because I, I was trying to keep the rules. I didn't realize, you know, you just have to keep that relationship. And, and then I read a book by um, Father Michael Gately, The Consecration to Mary, that helped, and The Merciful Love. And it was like, when it's too hard, you just pray and take the elevator. Just jump in his arms and you're with him. So that's helped, but the Mom's Rosary Group's helped and we still get together every Thursday, even over COVID, all over COVID. We met outside, minus 20 at times, and we'd pray the rosary and hang out outside together. And um, and it's like, well, because I'm Franciscan, we pray the liturgy of the hours every morning. Um, and we have a group at church that does that. Um, we have a really good morning coffee group after mass. Jesus is there no matter what. It doesn't matter how many times you screw up, it doesn't matter. He, he's so merciful and gracious that He just wants the best for you. Like, I knew my parents wanted the best for me, um, but Jesus wants the best for, for everyone. And you can always go to Him. It doesn't matter how many times you fall, and I've fallen a lot. It doesn't matter how many times you fall, just get back up, just go to Him because he's there and he's waiting and he has good things planned. I remember a priest told me too one time, I said, I just can't do this. And I I thought about suicide actually a few different times because the relationships weren't working out. It was hard to be Christian, it was hard to be Catholic. And the priest just said, just keep coming back. Just keep, don't worry about. And I thought I would never be able to get out of those patterns. like. So I know what people that struggle with addictions because relationships are an addiction in itself. And, and I was running from the feelings of um, brokenness of, you know, of all the sin that hurts people and how much I hurt people. And it was, I, God is the redeemer. He redeems, he restores, he wants to um, provide the way. And then as I keep going, he just keeps showing me that he is. He is faithful and he's faithful and he's with us. Are you searching for purpose of life? Discover your true identity. Stay tuned to Shalom World.